So the garage is a mess right now, and today we're gonna build a table so I can start stacking this pile of stuff on top of the table instead of the ground, you know, keeping things organized. I want to mimic the style of these other tables that I've built. So the metal table I'm building today is three feet by eight feet with a height of about 35 inches, give or take. And like the other tables that I've built, this one is also gonna be on wheels because I like the ability to move everything around. This one is gonna be built out of metal and I have the design in my head, not so much written down on paper. So it's gonna really be one of those things that we uh, get started and see how it turns out at the end. That being said, let's get started. So I have a giant slab of metal here on the ground. I think it's one quarter inch by three feet by 10 feet. And I had my local metal mark, just a company that sells a bunch of metal, slice that for me. They have a giant pincer machine that made short work of it. And I also had them cut these pieces of metal here for me that are gonna be in like structural supports for the legs. The legs are tucked back in here on this same pile and they were taken from the scrap pile and I'm gonna use them to mount the casters on the bottom. So it should be interesting to see if it all turns out. The metal slab already weighs several hundred pounds, so I'm gonna build the whole thing on the floor where it's easier. So this isn't gonna be a welding tutorial by any means because I'm not a good welder. I have one of the most basic welders that are available that just plug into a normal wall outlet, the 110. I have 220 here in the garage, but I haven't upgraded my welder yet and I'm welding some pretty thick metal. And how it works is this little end right here, every time I click this button, wire comes out of the tip. And when there's an electrical connection made between this tip and the ground, which I have clamped to the metal, this metal that just comes out, the wire, adds metal to the gap and glues both pieces of metal together. And so I'm moving very slowly between one piece of the metal to another and kind of like an arc to glue, just like a hot glue gun, both of these pieces of metal together. And I can adjust how much power is coming out of this machine as well as the speed of this wire. And using those two variables, I can adjust how thick that glue bead is between the two pieces of metal. And to make a cleaner weld, I have to make sure that the metal itself is really clean. Using acetone is a good way to get rid of all the debris and dust on top, because the cleaner the metal, the cleaner your weld is gonna be, at least from what I can tell. So there is one of my welds, and if I brush it off, you can see that it's pretty securely gluing the top metal with this bar that I'm gonna use to support the legs. And the reason I'm not doing the whole seam all along the edge is one, that would take forever, two, the welds that I'm making are really strong, and three, if I weld too much in the same spot, it'll warp the metal a little bit. And so I'm going, you know, sporadically across the beam so that the top of the metal isn't warped when I'm done. The last thing I wanna show you before I put down um, the other side rails is this welding helmet is electronic. So we can see through the welding helmet right now, but as soon as I start welding, this will go dark, I'll show you in a minute, and it protects my eyes. You can see how the lens instantly dims and only lets me see the bead of light coming from the weld, which is super important because it's so bright that it can damage your eyes really quick. So now that you know the basics, let's finish gluing these pieces of metal together. So you can see with this one, there's a small curve at the edge of this metal. Start at the base of the table, curve my way up onto this bar, down, curve up, curve back down, curve up, all the way down to the end. And then it adds a really thick bead of metal along all the welds. So now I need to cut a piece of metal for the cross beams so the legs will mount to it. And all I have are woodworking tables now. If only I had a giant metal table that I could do this cut on. There's several ways to cut metal. There's like a cutoff wheel. Um, I have a portable bandsaw that I could use to cut this off, or I have a metal chop saw. All of them are kind of rough ways of cutting metal, but it should get the job done. So this is a flap disc, and it's used to kind of grind down the edge of metal. Normally I would use a grinder, but once again, I don't have a metal table to mount my grinder to. So. And that should clean it up enough that we can put it on the table. So 
So I just realized the reason I ran out of rectangular tubing and had to use angle iron on the end was because I was supposed to use the angle iron for the entire top and the rectangle tubing for the supports on the, around the legs. So that was a mistake. But I don't think it's gonna end up being that big of a mistake because now I can use that angle iron for brackets for the casters, which you'll see in a second. So the next thing we gotta do is weld the legs upright. The thing is, welding won't eat through this rust very well. It needs to have like a bare metal connection for a better weld. So what I'm gonna do is take my flap disc and get rid of that rust so it looks like this and there's gonna be a better weld. So I have two levels on the legs to kind of tell me if it's tilting left or right, but the problem is is that the slope of the garage is also at an angle, so the levels aren't doing a perfectly good job of keeping the leg perpendicular with the table top. So what I've used is this square, and the square does a much better job of telling me if the leg is perpendicular to the table top, and then I can just move this around to the other side. So far, that's been the way I've found that works the best to keep the legs up. So now I have chopped up another piece of angle iron and I've put it at the base of the feet. Remember, this whole table is going to be flipped over someday. And right here, we can see that the angle iron is going to be making a shelf once it is flipped over. And that piece of wood over here is going to be a bottom shelf. Just like I've done with all of my other tables, there's going to be storage space on top and below. Now it's time to weld up the angle iron. Whoops. I accidentally, uh, melted my clamp. <laughs> I've got extras. Since I'll be putting wheels on top of this, I just took that bead of weld and uh, ground it down so it'll be flat with the surface and the wheels won't be tilted squonkers. Both long crossbars are welded in place, and now we have the short crossbars to put up. But these are a little bit different. I can't just weld them in place as they are. Remember, this piece is a bottom shelf for the wood, and we need this to also be a shelf matching up right here, but we need the back end to extend to the edge of this so we can weld it and it'll still be a support. So basically, we have to cut this much off the crossbar so that it'll rest in between this piece of angle iron and this piece of angle iron. You'll see what I mean in a minute, and we will be using a cutoff wheel for this. It's not a flap disc, it's a lot thinner, and it should be able to slice through the metal about as easy as the big chop saw over there. And now, with this cutout, we should be able to fit it right in there as the uh, small side of the shelf. And there we have it, all welded in place. Now we just need to do the other side, and then we're ready for wheels. So with a table this big and heavy, I needed some pretty beefy wheels, and so I decided to go with metal casters. These are some pretty big ones. They can handle 1,000 pounds per wheel, and the whole table, so 4,000 pounds spread out between all four of them. Even though the table doesn't weigh that much, I want it to be beefy enough that I can like hammer on the table and the wheels not break or damage or compress like rubber wheels would. These, there is no compressing metal. These are mostly made for high temperature situations, um, but they weren't even that expensive, so I went with them. 
Now in order to mount them in place, obviously if I just stuck the wheel on top of it, two of the bolts would go down in these holes. Now if I wanted something quick and dirty, I could just weld all four wheels straight to the frame, but I want the option of taking the wheels off later. So what I'm doing is marking out bolt holes on this, drilling through all the way through the angle iron here, and then just tacking the bolts on the back side of the metal, setting the whole thing down into place, and putting a couple more welds around the side just for good measure. That way if I wanna switch the wheels or take away the wheels entirely, I have that option later. Cause once you weld something in place, it's relatively permanent. Bolts, not so much. And there you have it, the table is done. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, the table looks a little bit upside down and you would be right. I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna flip it yet. I estimate that it weighs around five or 600 pounds, which is pretty heavy. And, uh, but I have an idea. Well, at least we know it's well balanced. There, easy. So I added a board down for that bottom shelf and you might be asking yourself, hey Jerry, why is your table flying? And that's because I'm actually weighing it right now and it is a total of 642 pounds, which is not too bad. It's a pretty big table with lots of room up top and below for activities. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this project, having a little fun with metal. I'm pretty happy with it. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you around.